Oh, thank you for uh, for having me here today. Um, just want to thank the Pipes for putting us up last night at their uh, their their house there. And I uh, I first visited this church a couple months ago, and uh, while I was working on the railroad, they uh, I'll t- I'll tell you the story how it worked. The um, some of you guys know some of the railroaders. Some of you guys were railroaders or are railroaders. And, and so we're assigned to certain jobs. And if somebody with more seniority over you wants your job, well, they can bump you off that job. And you have to find another place to work, another area to work. And usually when you get bumped off your particular job, you have 48 hours to find a new job or they put you where they want you. And uh, I normally work out of Taylor, Texas. That's near Austin. And uh, it's closer to where I live. And so normally I work there. And somebody wanted my job, so they bumped me off. And, and uh, so I'm like, okay, well, I got two days off. So I'll just go ahead and take this two days off. And I thought I had a little bit longer. I thought I had to, like, maybe... 12 o'clock, 11 o'clock at night, and uh, so I said, all right, well, let me go ahead and call in and put myself on a job, and, and they're like, no, you've, you've, uh, you're evading status. You've been waiting too long, and so now you have to go to Del Rio. I'm like, Del Rio? I've never been to Del Rio. So they're like, well, that's where you got to go. So you got to report to duty, on duty Monday morning. So I packed up my car and drove down here and and um, was down here for a couple of weeks. And I uh, finally had a Sunday where I wasn't working. And so I decided to come and visit. And so it, it just when, when it, at first that happened, I was like, oh, man, why, why me? Why is this happening to me? What? I got to drive all the way down there, away from my family. But I think about it now, it's like the Lord knew what he was doing. The Lord knew that, uh, that he had something for me, and, and so I got to come visit you. And, and uh, ne- next thing you know, you're inviting me to come preach. <laughs> uh, at first I was like, well, it was actually Gino. When I first visited here, Everybody says, oh, you know Gene, you know Gene? I'm like, oh, yeah, I worked with him. And they're like, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> and so I was like, I said, man, this church must be a little crazy. I invited a railroader to come and preach, especially one invited by Gino. <laughs> so, no, no, I, I'm very thankful. Um, so like Tommy said earlier, I have six kids. So speaking of crazy... I have six kids, and, and a lot of, there's, sometimes there's lots of questions people ask me. Um, they ask, are they all from the same marriage? I'm like, yes, yes, yes. I've been married to my wife going on almost 19 years. Uh, another question they ask is, do you know what causes that? I'm like, well, yeah, I hope so. <laughs> then they ask if I have a TV. Do you have a TV? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I have a TV. I have cable, and, and, and then they ask, I have, have to give an answer. No, I'm not competing with the Duggars. And <laughs> no, I'm not Catholic. And no, I'm not Mormon, although I was born in Utah. And uh, no, there's nothing in the water up there in Austin. And uh, then they ask, are you done yet? Well, I don't know. Maybe that's where the crazy part comes in. (laughs) So what I wanted to talk to you today about was one of my favorite Bible verses. And and it's it's one that I memorized when I was when I was younger, maybe at vacation Bible school. And it was one that only took me a couple of weeks to memorize. It was uh, John chapter 11, verse 35. If you know that, it's one of the shortest Bible verses, Jesus wept. Like, yeah, that's right. I said it only took me a couple of weeks to memorize that one. But, you know, I, I got to thinking, it's like, Jesus wept. Why would, why would Jesus cry? You know, what could make the Son of God cry? The creator of the universe. What, 
what could make him cry? And so I was like, all right, well, I need to study this a little deeper. And I, I asked, I asked the, my Sunday school teacher, I said, like, why would Jesus cry? And he said, well, that story is about his friend Lazarus who had died. And he was pretty sad about his friend dying. And so I'm like, okay, all right, sounds good. So I, I decided to go back and, and, and read it. That's a funny concept. Read something in the Bible and learn about it. So I went back and I said, well, let's just kind of start from the beginning. So uh, if you have your Bibles, uh, if you want to turn to John chapter 11, uh, start with verse 1. I'll go ahead and, and, and read this story while you're turning there. Uh, verse 1, a man named Lazarus was sick. He lived in Bethany with his sisters, Mary and Martha. This is the same Martha who had poured expensive perfume on the Lord's feet and wiped them with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was sick. So, so what we gather so far is there was a guy named Lazarus. He had two sisters. They lived in Bethany, and he was really sick. Okay, and sick enough to where in verse 3 it says, so the two sisters sent a tweet to Jesus telling him, Lord, the one you love is very sick. Yeah, I said tweet. Maybe they sent a bird. That was their messenger. That was their tweeting back then. So yeah, so they sent a message to Jesus telling him, Lord, the one you love is very sick. Okay, so back then, you know, it wasn't quick instant message. You know, a message could take two or three days. Okay, so... You know, I, I, you know, still keeping in mind, you know, why, why would Jesus cry? You know, and, and the answer I got was because his friend was going to die or his friend had died. And so he was sad. So we'll, we'll kind of investigate a little further here. Um, in verse four, it says, but when Jesus heard about it, he said, Lazarus' sickness will not end in death. No, it is for the glory of God. I, the Son of God, will receive glory from this. Okay, so just to kind of set the story up a little bit. Jesus is, is hanging out with his disciples. And they had, they had fled Jerusalem just recently because they were... They were being persecuted there, you know. The Jewish leaders were kind of upset at Jesus' teaching, you know. He was doing miracles and, and, and doing it in, in the Lord's name. And, and so they were saying that he was putting himself in, in the same shoes as God. They were, he was basically saying he was God. And so they were calling him a blasphemer. And they threw rocks and tried to kill him. So they ran him out of, out of the town. So they're all hanging out outside, uh, out of the town. And so he's, he's talking to the, him. He said, uh, but when Jesus heard about it, he said, Lazarus' sickness will not end in death. No, it is for the glory of God. So so we'll come back to that verse in a minute. In verse 5, it says, Although Jesus loved Mary and Martha and Lazarus, he stayed where he was for the next two days and did not go to them. So we, we gathered from the letter that they sent that he loved Lazarus. Okay, and we know that it could take quite a while for that message to get there. And it might take a while for him to get where Lazarus was. But he waited. He waited two days. And so you would think that when he got the letter, and if he was worried about his friend dying, that, you know, he would have said, hey, my friend's sick, let's go. But no, he's like, no, nah, I'm going to hang out and eat figs and pomegranate and hang out and... But he hung out for it. And I was like, why, why would he wait? Why would he wait? And he says, although Jesus loved Martha and Mary and Lazarus, he stayed two more days. So he stayed 
because he loved them. I was like, well, if he's worried about his friend dying and he waited because he loves them, it's like, look back at verse 4. It says, but when Jesus heard about it, he said, Lazarus' sickness will not end in death. So he knows something. He knows that his sickness is not going to end in death. So that, and, and the next part, it says, it is for the glory of God. And he, God's going to receive glory for this. So let's go over to verse 6. He stayed there for two more days. And then 7, it says, finally, after two days, he said to his disciples, let's go to Judea again. Okay. So these uh, disciples that he's hanging out with, these, these are fishermen. You know, these are kind of the, the, the tough guys back then. You know, have you guys seen that show Deadliest Catch? You know, where they're out in those Alaska waters on these big crabbing boats. And, you know, there's big metal cages swinging around and the waves are crashing. And it's a pretty, pretty tough job. You got to be pretty strong to do that. It was the same thing back then, you know, with the, carrying the big nets and, and, you know, so the, the fishermen were the tough guys. And so in verse eight, I re it reads, but his disciples objected. Teacher, they said, only a few days ago, the Jewish leaders in Judea were trying to kill you, and you're going there again? You know, I, I, could just, I could just see, you know, they're all sitting around, and, and he says, all right, two days. Let's, let's go back to, uh, let's go see Lazarus. And the disciples, like, raising his hand. Um, yeah, uh, uh, teacher, uh, uh, we were just in, uh, we were just there a couple days ago, and... Uh, we left because uh, they were trying to kill us with rocks. They were throwing rocks at us, and they hurt. And you want to go there again? And so Jesus said to him, he replied, verse 9, There are 12 hours of daylight everywhere. As long as it is light, people can walk safely. They can see because they have the light of the world. Only at night is there danger of stumbling because there is no light. So they say, we're going to go there again. And he starts talking about daylight and sunlight. And I was like, oh, there, there's Jesus again talking in parables. And it's like, how, how, how these, I could just see them saying, we're talking about getting hit by rocks. And he's talking about the daylight, you know. But then I got to thinking, he actually gave the perfect answer. You know, he says, as long as there's daylight, you can walk safely. He's saying that I am the light. You are safe with me. Walk with me and you will be safe. There's nothing to worry about. Jesus said, I got your back. Come with me. And then in verse 11, it says, then he said, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but now I will go and wake him up. Um, rabbi, teacher, uh, if he's sleeping, that means he's getting better. That's what it says in the Bible. That's what it says. They were, you know, he's like, uh, if he's sleeping, he's going to get better. And, you know, 13, they thought Jesus meant Lazarus was having a good night's sleep. But Jesus meant that, Jesus, that Lazarus had died. And then in verse 14, Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. So now there's no more parables. There's no more joking around. There's no more talking about he's asleep. He comes out straight and says, he is dead. Lazarus is dead. And then 15, it says, and for your sakes, I am glad I wasn't there. Okay, well, now does this sound like someone who's sad? Someone who is upset that his friend is sick or, or is now dead. He says that he's glad. And he's glad that he wasn't there because it, it's going to give them another opportunity to believe in Jesus, to believe what Jesus is going to do. You know, it, 
the whole first part of John, you know, he's, he's doing miracles and, and doing things in the Lord's name and, and showing the people who he really is. And, and so he's like, well, here's another opportunity for me to show you who I am. I'm saying who I am, and you know, this is your, another opportunity for you to believe. And for your sakes, I'm glad I wasn't there, because this will give you another opportunity to believe in me. Let's go see him. Okay. So, now, we know that, that he's dead. He's, he's, he's not only dead, he's, he's good and dead, because they waited for a couple more days. You know, Jesus was kind of waiting until he was good and dead. All right. So, most, most people, you know, Someone might come in and say, oh, wow, well, I had, I had a, a fever last week. I had a cold, and, uh, but I'm better now. And another one might come in, oh, my, my hip was hurting, but, but, but I'm better now. And, you know, but not a whole lot of people have come in and said, well, I was, I was dead last week. I died, but I'm better now. You know, you know dead, dead, dead's forever. Dead's a, for a long time. All right, verse 19. No, wait, I'm excuse me. 16. Thomas, uh, he was nicknamed the twin, said to his fellow disciples, let's go to and die with Jesus. See, he's still thinking about the rocks, you know. He remembers that they, they threw him and it hurt. So he's still thinking about the rocks. He said, let's go to and die with Jesus. When Jesus arrived at Bethany, he was told that Lazarus had been in his grave for four days. Bethany was only a few miles away down the road from Jerusalem. And many of the people had come to pay their respects and console Martha and Mary on their loss. Okay, so it makes a point that he was dead for four days. In the Jewish customs, they, they would wait three days before they pronounce someone dead. So you, you see on, on the, the medical shows on TV or in the movies where they're giving them CPR and then they look at their watch and it's like beep. And they're like, ah, pronounce dead at 1052. Well, back then they waited three days just to make sure. I guess they were hoping that you're gonna start coughing and wake up again. But there, after three days, they're like, nope, they're dead. So now it's four days. So like I said, he was good and dead at this point. When in verse 20, when Martha got word that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him. But Mary stayed home. Taking a break here for a second. When... Uh, I, uh, I was in the Marine Corps, and I got out in 96 and went to seminary, and uh, Andy and I, we, it was, it was, our relationship's kind of weird. We didn't really have the, a, a dating period, but we were, we'd hang out all the time. We both went to college together, and we worked at the college in classes together, and went to church and, and uh, Sunday school together, and... Um, but we never really called it dating. Oh, that's a different story. So, uh, you know, there came a point where I was like, you know, I really love her and I wanted to marry her. But I wanted to, uh, you know, come up with a way to propose to her um, unlike any other guy had done. Wait, that didn't sound right. <laughs> it, it, like anyone else, you know, I wanted to, you know, do do something that would be a little different. So... I came by her house. I told her we were going to go out to eat and uh, go, going out to eat and going to the movies. That was kind of our thing. So that's why I said we're going to do our thing. So I went to her house, but I told her that I wanted to take her someplace special to, uh, to eat. And so I went out to the car and I opened the door for her and I took out a blindfold and I blindfolded her and pushed her in the car. And <laughs> made the neighbors think, oh, what's going on over there? 
so uh, so I kept her blindfolded, and and so we drove around, and, and I I drove around the neighborhood, and kind of got on the freeway, drove around for about 20, 25, 30 minutes or so, and and so during this time, I had her friends were back at her house, and they were preparing the backyard. It had a little patio area, little covered patio, and so they were decorating it while we were gone. And, um, you know, I was a seminary student and didn't make a whole lot of money, but I had I'd been saving up for uh, a wedding ring. And uh, I had it with me in my pocket and drove around. And so we ended up pulling right back up to her house. So, you know, I drove around so she'd get confused and not know exactly where we were. So I pulled into the driveway and got out and held her arm and kind of walked her towards the backyard. She said, where are we at? You know, and, and then got in the backyard and took the blindfold off and everybody said, surprise. And she's like, it's not my birthday. <laughs> Actually, it was your birthday, wasn't it? It was her birthday. Yeah, so it was a surprise party, surprise birthday party. Okay, and so, um, so we, you know, I was just kind of making it like a birthday party. And then when, uh, when it came time, you know, I pulled out the ring, and I got down and, and proposed to her. And I have, I have a picture of that. <laughs> I know, I know. I had blonde hair, <laughs> curly hair. And, and don't mind that shirt. That's 100% rayon. <laughs> I'm still holding on to the 80s there, I guess. But yeah, so I got down on my knee, and I proposed to her. And, and she cried, and she was happy, and we stood up and hugged and almost fell in the pond there. And, and, uh, and so after that, a couple months later, we got married. And then we had started having kids, a lot of them. <laughs> so coming back to our story here in verse, let's see, where am I at? In verse uh, 20, when Martha got the word that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him. But Mary stayed at home, and Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you would have been there, my brother would not have died. Okay, so now I'm thinking back to my, my proposal. And if I got down on my knee and took out that ring that I'd been saving, and I presented it to her, and to think, what if, if she said, is that the biggest one you could find? Is that the best you could do? I, I would have been heartbroken. You know, I had, I had saved up for that ring. And if she would have said something like that, I would have been crushed. And so looking at, at, at Jesus, when, when Mary came to him, or I mean Martha came to him and said, Lord, if you would have been there, my brother would have died. And so at that point, he was, Jesus was feeling a little crushed. Verse 22, she said, But even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask. So at this point, Jesus is like, All right, cool. Man, there's a little bit of, bit of spark of hope there. And then Jesus tells her, Your brother will rise again. You know, he's excited about what's about to happen. He's not sad at all. He's excited. 24, yes, Martha said, when everyone else rises on the resurrection day. That, that's not what he meant. You know, she's, she's thinking far in the future when everyone's going to be resurrected. And then Jesus told her in verse 20, 25, Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die like everyone else, will live again. They, they are all given eternal life for believing in me and will never perish. Do you believe this, Martha? He, he's given her a chance right here. Do you believe? I am the resurrection. I am the life. I'm the one who can bring him back from the dead. And again, Martha says, Yes, Lord, she told him. I have always believed 
that you were the Messiah, the Son of God. Well, that's not what he asked. You know, he, he said, do you believe me? I can raise him from the dead right now. I have that power. In 28, then she left him and returned to Mary. She called Mary aside from the mourners and told her, the teacher is here and wants to see you. So Mary immediately went to him. So she's like, Jesus is close. I'm going to go see what's up with him. In verse 30, now Jesus stayed outside the village at a place where Martha met him. When the people who were at the house trying to console Mary saw her leave so hastily, they assumed she was going to go to Lazarus' grave to weep. So they followed her there. When Mary arrived and saw Jesus, she fell down at his feet and said, Lord, if you would have been there, my brother would not have died. So again, even Martha's sister Mary, she's blaming Jesus. That's what she's doing. She's blaming God that, that her brother had died. If you had only been here, my brother would live, would be alive. And when Jesus saw her weeping and saw the other people wailing for her, he was moved with indignation and was deeply troubled. Over and over and over, Jesus is saying, you know, I have the power. I have the power of God. I can do whatever, whatever I need to do. And, and they don't believe him. And so he's deeply troubled. In verse 34, he says, where have you put him? He asked them, oh, where have you put him? He asked him. They told him, Lord, come and see. And then Jesus wept. The people who were standing there nearby, see how much he loved him? But then someone said, this man healed a blind man. Why couldn't he have kept Lazarus from dying? So even the crowd, they're like doubting Jesus. The whole crowd, you know, except the one guy is like, you know, he healed the blind man. Why couldn't he have kept him from dying? And so if we remember, we go back to verse 4 and he says, but when Jesus heard about it, he said, Lazarus' sickness will not end in death. No, it is for the glory of God. So he had the plan all along. He knew that he was going to have the opportunity to raise Lazarus from the dead. He knew that his sickness was not going to end in death. He knew that Lazarus was going to rise again. You know, So he wasn't sad for, for his friend dying. He knew what was going to happen. He was sad because... He was right there saying, I'm the one that you need to turn to. I'm, I'm here to help you. All you have to do is believe. You know, how many, of you, how many of us at nighttime go to sleep, stressed out from the day before, and we wake up like, oh, I got to go sit in traffic or, you know, back to work, and you, you deal with all the troubles at work, and and or or maybe uh, you you have some kind of sickness that you're dealing with, and you go out through the day hurting, and and when you come home stressed out, and then you go to bed, and 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 you fall down just exhausted from the day, you know, and Jesus is right there next to you with his arms open, and he cries. He's like, here I am. I'm the Father. Come to me, and I will give you life abundant. But we go to sleep, and we don't turn to God. So God covers his eyes, and he cries. In verse 38, again, Jesus was deeply troubled. They came to the grave. It was a cave with a stone rolled across its entrance. Jesus said, roll the stone aside. But Martha said, 
Martha, the dead man's sister, said, Lord, by now the smell will be so terrible because he's good and dead, remember? That he's been dead for four days. And Jesus responded, Didn't I tell you that you will see the God's glory if you believe? So they rolled the stone aside, and Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, thank you for hearing me. You always hear me, but I said it out loud for the sake of all these people standing here, so that they will believe that you sent me. Then Jesus shouted, Lazarus, come out! And Lazarus came out, bound in grave clothes. His face was wrapped in headcloths, and Jesus told him, unwrap him and let him go. So they, no, one, no one believed that Jesus could do this, but Jesus has the power to raise people from the dead, you know. Is that anything compared to, to our problems, you know? When we're dead, we're gone, you know. But that, that's kind of final. But our problems today, you know, are no comparison to that. And Jesus has the power to raise from the dead. So he has the power to, to help you, help you make it through the day. All you have to do is believe, um, and, and he'll give you that power to walk through the day. So I ask, go ahead and, and bow your heads. I ask the band to come up uh, for our invitation. Thank you, Father, so much for loving us. Thank you so much for sending your son, Jesus, to die on the cross for us. Thank you for giving him the power to heal us from what ails us. Thank you for having enough power to raise Lazarus from the dead. I, I just ask that, that we will trust in you and we will believe that you will do what you say you will do. You said that you'll give us life more abundant if we just believe. So Father, I just ask to lay on our hearts and give us the faith to believe, to believe in you. We love you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen.